from the penthouse suite, the Rexworth penthouse suite, away from Castle Rexworth and the Rexworth Estates, I bid you all good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you are, and whenever you are. My name is Rexworth, Lord Rexworth. I'm joined by Zoe the Demon Fox, and we are going to be playing more Steins Gate Elite. Yes, Steins Gate's still got a gate, it's still elite stuff, and uh, we're still going to be doing live voice acting work of that. 3.27 a.m. at the moment, but we're doing good, thank you, how are you? Doing alright, Enrique, welcome in, welcome into chat. And uh, welcome into everybody on, on both sides of stream here. Um, as we uh, as we begin with part two of Steins Gate Elite. Zoe, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. I've been excitedly looking forward to this all week. Yes, indeed, indeed. No, it was quite fun, uh, and I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, trying to remember where we left off. Um, I think it was shortly after we were getting to know everyone and we discovered that uh, there was a microwave that um, doubled as a time machine. So that I was... don't think they figured that out yet, but... I, yeah, um, no, they... I don't know, they, they did something with bananas and... Um, it was weird. So, yeah. There's that. They sent the bananas back in time, so they turned all green and gooey. Yes. Quite. Also, I came prepared. Mm -hmm. That's why what you were probably seeing right now is... I don't know if you're seeing the game or my desktop. Um, I don't know or... yet, because right now I've just got the Just Chatting uh, screen up. Don't know if you know, my lord, but in the stream title, if you link all the letters together, we can't click on Zoe's uh, channel. Hey. But my name is all the letters linked together. There's no no spaces in the middle. Let me put a space next to the slash here. An update. Oh yeah, do you just type it in, or do you like let it autofill? Because I I'm... think autofill is the only thing that lets the thing thing. Like, yeah, when you're typing it in, then you see, like, the names appear underneath it. Thank you, now it works. Okay, good. Just needed to put a space. Or, and... I mean, that worked. Too. Yeah. So, that got it. Alright, excellent. Well, um, let's go ahead and switch over to the game screen. And, uh, we can, uh, we can get underway. Um, I know you're seeing it, Jedi, but I meant for, like, the, the Discord stream, because I was having issues with it before first time. I think we're good. Before we do get into uh, all of it, though, uh, posting into my side of chat, uh, the usual links and everything, lordrexworth.com is the website, lordrexworth.com, uh, twitter.com slash lordrexworth. Also got a Discord, the Castle Rexworth Discord. Feel free to join that if you're the age 18 or over. And then also got uh, got a throne page, uh, throne.com forward slash uh, Lord Rexworth. And my comms are also open. You can buy me a coffee. Actually, I had to have a coffee on my way home. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I needed a caffeine pick-me-up. I, I had had next to no caffeine today. So I was, um, I was dragging. <laughs> All right, let's switch over here. Okay, that's good. I'm surprised it's actually letting me stream it to Discord this time. Did I not do that before? I don't... I had to stream my window last time, if you remember, because it just refused to stream the game window. Huh. Interesting. Let's... See. There it is on my side. Let's see. Transform. Hit the screen. I'm glad you like my tail, Enrique. Canonically. The version of Zoe that I am, the multiverse of Zoe's, does not have a tail. 
But it's too fluffy to get rid of. <laughs> right. Let's get into this. Tokyo Denki University, where Dadu and I go to school, collaborates with ATF to set up satellite classes. Summer credits, basically. We have to attend the seminar and write a report. Come to think of it, what's today's seminar about again? I looked it up before the summer holiday began, should have written it down. Why are you going to be a puddle by the end of this Jedi? I don't have any MILF voice lines. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Behind me is the large, unidentified object that crashed into a building near Akihabara Station. The building is under police barricade. No one is allowed to approach, but from a distance, the object appears to be some kind of satellite. A new message is from Mayuri. You know, I'm really sad about dropping my Upa. It's worse than last year when I missed buying Fatty Jiro Foggy. Responding to every last aspect of a message is a waste of time. I should just pick one topic to respond to, and maybe I won't reply at all. Do you want to reply? Um, sure, why not? Be rude to just leave her on red. I'm hitting enter and nothing's happening. Uh, I feel your pain. That thing was worth a fortune. A precious re research funds. Ores. There, I should do it. My, I feel that AC. I'm alive. Unlike the lab, Daibiru has air conditioning. Makes it an oasis for poorer students like us. And another reason for our diligent participation in the seminar. About the phone wave. Name subject change. I might have found our answer. You know, that name subject to change thing's really annoying. I won't give in that easily. Even if no other lab members use names subject to change, I will carry on until the day we decide its true name. Now's not the time. So... What's your latest ridiculous theory? What do you mean ridiculous? My genius brain considers every possibility. Even those a lesser mind would say break the laws of nature. Don't you dare call that ridiculous. So basically you're just pulling stuff out of your ass. You can't call that science. Stop interrupting me. This raid, I'll never get to my point. Daru, now I have a hunch that the phone wave, name subject to change, may be the key to opening Stein's Gate. How's that? Stein's what? You lost me back a ridiculous man. Let me 
share my revelations about the phone wave name subject change. Damn you. My brilliant ideas will clearly find no purchase with Dadu. Time to change the topic. So you're telling me you have no interest in checking out Radikan? I won't get to see anything anyway. Besides, most of the info is out on the net already. It's more than 100 threads on that channel. That's not dude. But when I ask him if there's any information about a Makise Kurisu on that channel... Well, that again... What do you mean, again? I mean, you sent me that email like a week ago, right? I sent you an email? Don't be ridiculous, I just saw her dead just three hours ago. You know, that message was kind of weird. It was dated a week after I got it, which means it came from the future. He's right. The email was sent from my phone. It was split into three mails. Someone stab. Makiseke. Risu. Don't. This is the email I sent you three hours ago. A chime signals at arrival on the fifth floor. The elevator doors open slowly. As we step out of the elevator, I see a girl and I recognize her. You. You. Impossible. But she's dead, you might be saying to yourself. <laughs> Chills run down my spine. Fuck. I stared at her face in disbelief. Makise Kurisu. Is there something wrong? You... You... You should be dead! Why are you here? And you even... There isn't a single blood stain on her clothes. And the same one she was wearing when I found her. Only a serious wound could have produced that much blood. I watched the entire anime, and I never fucking realized she has belts on her rip on her arms to keep her jacket on because she doesn't wear it on her shoulders. Hmm. Yet, as far as I can tell, she's completely uninjured. Not a scratch. I realize I'm gasping in disbelief. What's wrong with you? You're... You're okay. But that's impossible. Someone stabbed you. I saw you lying in a pool of blood. Hey, could you not talk about me like that? I'm perfectly fine. Is she an illusion? No, an, e an evil spirit. Am I haunted? No, I don't believe in such unscientific drivel. I'm a mad scientist. There's an ironic statement. Feels silky. Quite the cuticles. Substance. 
She has substance. Of course she's not a ghost. How silly of me. The skin's so soft. So alive. Dead bodies don't feel like this. Not that I've ever touched one. Also, hello, hello. Oh. Oh, awkward in. I, I don't think that's a good idea, mate. <laughs> Hey, are you trying to get yourself arrested? I just want to know the truth. That's right, she was stabbed. Maybe she's just hiding her wounds. This requires further investigation. I grabbed the hem of her jacket. This is a huge mistake. <laughs> I pull it aside and take a good look at her chest. That is also a huge mistake. Though we stare respectfully. It's gonna be... Okabe on the floor with a stab wound soon. What truth, you perv? You stupid? You wanna die? Louis John's favorite and famous line for the win! I know what I saw. Earlier this afternoon, after Dr. Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, someone killed Maki Sekurisu and left her in a pool of blood. I carefully explain everything that I saw. Wait. Dr. N fuck. Dr. Nakabachi? What are you talking about, Okarin? Dr. Nakabachi's presentation was cancelled. Cancelled? Yeah. Because of the satellite crash. Something's wrong. Our stories aren't matching. It's the same thing that happened right after I saw the mass disappearance. Mayuri's story didn't match mine. I need to know. Am I caught in some sinister plot? Is this another organization conspiracy? Excuse me, um... M my name is ho o in Kyoma. Really, man? You're helpless. Okay, ho in san I'd like to hear your story in more detail. Looks like she finally understands I'm not lying. But I still don't understand why my memories don't match any of everyone else's. I doubt that I can give her a good explanation. Makasa san, it's almost time. Huh? Oh, right. Thank you. Kurisu glances at me one more time, then sighs and heads towards the small conference room. We should go too. Go where? Dare the lecture, duh. Ah, that. Oh my gosh. Raiders, welcome in. Pink zombie, hello, hello. It's a zombie raid. Raiders, welcome in. If this is your first time, I'm Lord Rexworth, I'm an English nobleman VTuber, and I'm doing live VA work of Steins Gate Elite with Zoe the Demon Fox here. WinterRose underscore 14, thank you for the follow. Stand by. Let me get you a shout out. 
but yeah, welcome in Raiders. Having a jolly time. Ah, doing some VR chat. How how was uh how was VR chat? Pink, how, how'd that go? Everyone please go follow Pink Zombie. Absolutely uh chaotic but uh wonderful good times had with her streams. And she does D&D on the weekends. Yeah, I totally understand if you need to raid and run. Um, everyone, feel free to get up and stretch. Grab some hydration. Grab something to eat. Quack. 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 She's still in VR. Ah, I see. And thank you for the hydrate, Redeem Jedi. And the stretch. Wow, Jedi. No stretch for me. Care package incoming. Anyways, let's uh let's go on here with the um with our readings. Did she come to attend the lecture too? Strange. Why would the girl genius Makise Kurisu need to attend a lecture like this? Okay, my guess was a bit off. The girl genius did not come to attend the lecture. Um... I'd like to thank everyone for coming to hear me speak today. She's the one giving the lecture. Japan's famous girl genius, Makise Kurisu. Her other thesis published at the tender age of 17. According to Daru, she turned 18 a few days ago. I first heard about her when Daru pointed her out in a Gossip Magazine article. It's my first time giving a lecture like this, so please forgive me if I'm a little nervous. The audience is pretty mixed. There's mostly students like us, but there are also a couple of professors. Gonna go make food, lol. Have a good stream. All right, Winter Rose. Thank you so much. And Kadisu just gave me a sharp look. Oh no. Ooh. That's worse than a Paddington Bear hard stare. What did I do? I mean, you were fucking with her clothing and shit. When I stare back at her, she quickly looks away. Yeah, you're not the only one who can give Patty and Bear hard stares. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if she is a genius or whatever. At least it's not a Care Bear stare. <laughs> I still don't like her. She may have these people fooled with a timid girl act, but I learned at Radicon how cunning and aggressive she really is. Even if her murder was some kind of hallucination, my judgment of her character is still correct. For today's lecture, I've been asked to speak on the subject of time travel. It's not really my area of expertise, but I'll try my best. And get off the stage! <laughs> <laughs> he looks at me! Time travel, damn it! If you can't talk about time travel, get out! He looks at me! I'm gonna stop before I recite the whole vine. Time travel? Uh oh Let me start by saying that time travel is an absurd concept. How dare you! Oh, I know where this is going. I remember this scene. This is about to turn even... This is about to turn even more violent and outbursty and shouty than, um... That whole scene with Dr. Mifune and Teta of Mechagodzilla. 
which I never knew that scientists could get so outraged and start throwing punches at each other over the existence of a dinosaur, but there it is. OBJECTION! I hope we get one of those lines like was in my book with Petra. SILENCE! That's about the best I can give you tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, trust me, this game is going to be very long. Huh? It is presumptuous for you to claim that time travel is absurd. Oh, Karin. You magnificent fool. An ATF staffer entered the room ready to kick me out, but Karisu stopped him. Perhaps I got too carried away. Um, okay. It's fine, I guess. It'll be easier to talk in discussion format. Boy, calm down, you're not Phoenix Wright. I don't know, style the hair, put on a suit and tie, he could, he could pass as Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright's scientist cousin. You should inform your chat that this man is only... 19? Yeah. He certainly just gonna look it. We were talking about that last stream. Yes, this is, um... Yeah, that, that's what happens when you when you start up the whole pack-a-day habit with cigarettes. <laughs> Don't smoke, kids. It Do might not... make you taller, but you will look like you are in your 30s. <laughs> yeah. And it'll probably just stunt your growth anyway, so don't do it. And plus, there's the whole lung cancer and emphysema thing to think about. Don't start the head cannons, Lamau. Too late. You sound like you had one too many, honey. You gotta stop sick. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Thanks to her proposal, the event staff refrained from escorting me out. Yes. She sounds a little pissed, but let's not mind that. Never mind the fact that's putting it mildly. But before that, please listen to my thoughts on the subject. Scientists have proposed many theoretical models of time travel, but there are 11 in particular that bear mentioning. Hmm. What are the major theories of time travel? I've heard about the cosmic string theory, at least. Oh, God. The eleven theories. Neutron star theory, black hole theory, light speed theory. I don't know what any of these are. Tachyon theory, wormhole theory, exotic matter theory. Cosmic string theory... Quantum gravity theory, cesium laser theory. I I think I know a general TLDR of each of these. Um, neutron star, I think if you were to either fly into a neutron star or perhaps slingshot yourself around in a neutron star, it may theoretically be possible to time travel. Would black hole and wormhole fit under neutron star? In um, the... Yeah, black hole and wormhole, basically you go into a black hole or wormhole and Hope that you come out the other end in one piece and have traveled through time. Light speed theory, achieve faster than light travel, and you also get the added bonus of traveling through time. Um, tachyon theory, uh, I think build up enough tachyon particles and you can, you can go forward or backward in time. Exotic matter theory, I don't know anything about that. Cosmic string theory, that one is incredibly complex and I don't know anything about that. Um, same with quantum gravity. Cesium laser, well, I think you just build a cesium laser, shoot the damn thing, and boom, you time travel. I guess cesium laser is like you shoot yourself that laser and then like... Yeah. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Elementary particle ring and laser theory. That's where you form a particle ring, shoot a laser through the thing, and you've created a time portal. Sort of like a Stargate. Uh, Dirac antiparticle theory. I have no idea. I imagine it's probably like the Tachyon theory. 
build mm. up some steric antiparticles, and lo and behold, you have time travel. Yes, and probably rudimentary warp drive while you're at it, which feeds into the whole light speed theory. Ten cents like the genius is to achieve, just fire a fucking laser into the particle accelerator we and have in the Ellipses. Hmm. Not bad. Perhaps Maki Sekirisu is a worthy rival after all. However, all of these models are purely theoretical. However, all of these models are purely theoretical. Some of them even contradict each other. Well, what if someone comes up with a twelfth model? The microwave banana theory. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, uh, uh, right. Well... It could be contradicted by the thirteenth model now, couldn't it? The cursed girl. If you want to talk about time travel, just go to Dragon Ball, kidnap Trunks, and then you have an expert in time travel. I suppose that's true. Let's talk about time travel. Just do what one of my characters did in one of my stories. She can run fast enough to go backwards and forwards in time. Yeah, so just get yourself a TARDIS. Journey through space and time. The butterfly effect. I have to wonder if there's anything to that. There's a movie called The Butterfly Effect. It is actually really interesting. Hmm. I didn't expect that she'd twist my question and use it against me. All of a sudden I can feel everyone's eyes on me. It's risky to be conspicuous, so I probably shouldn't get too carried away. By the way, time travel to the future is available to us right now, according to Einstein's special theory of relativity. For example, let's say someone were to go to Haneda Airport and board a plane headed to Okinawa. Upon arrival, that person would be about 100 millionth of a second farther into the future than I am. Fucking time zones! What does that mean? I'm thinking about the butterfly effect movie now. I think the whole plot of the movie is like the guy's girlfriend dies, he somehow accidentally time travels, figures out how to do it consistently. But in the end, after failing to fix anything, he realizes the best thing he can do is just never meet her in the first place. It's rather anticlimactic. It's a dark movie. Sounds like it. One of those unhappy ends types. Hmm. According to the special theory of relativity, time moves slower for objects as they approach the speed of light. For example, if you could run at near the speed of light, you could reach a point where time only moves half as fast for you. If you were to keep running at that speed for 24 hours, 48 hours would elapse in the rest of the world, meaning you would jump one day into the future. Understand, Hoin Kiyoma? Gah. Why are you singling me out? Well, you're the one who decided to stand why. up and make an ass of yourself. And was feeling her up before this. Yes, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> then what about going to the past? If one boards a plane from an Okinawa and goes to the other place, then you go one millionth of a second into the past. One going millionth to the past of a second. Is possible right now. Take a look at the sky at night. You can see light from tens of thousands of years ago, can't you? Well, I was just getting started. Oh no. Let's say we wanted to make a machine that can physically transport people through time. What would we need? The best candidates for this are cosmic strings and wormholes. 
A cosmic string is a string-shaped crevice with extreme mass. A string-shaped crevice. A reminder that she said she has no expertise in this field, and she's spouting all this shit to counter Akabe. <laughs> she knows how to hide her power. That must be how they enter our universe. But do cosmic strings really exist? Oh god, here we go again. A crevice is about as wide as an elementary particle, and at least as long as the diameter of a galaxy. It has immense mass, so it distorts space-time. If you were to travel throughout a distortion, you can make a full circle around the string in less than 360 degrees. In short, you can do something resembling a warp. This is called a space-time angular deficit. I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. I saw it while he was talking that I figured it out, but I I don't understand. <laughs> right now, I feel like the like the fat dum dums on Star Trek TNG. We build things, things that make us go. <laughs> we know how to build your warp drive. That does not mean we know how it functions. <laughs> yes. I've come to remind you that you are a wonderful, talented, awesome, handsome, amazing person. You are cared for and loved greatly no matter what. You deserve the best and are worth the universe and so much for more. Well, thank you, Galaxy, and welcome in. Oh, I thought of a good quote. We're paid to build it, not paid to understand it. <laughs> yes, precisely. When you pass through an area of angular deficit, transit time becomes zero. Now we apply this to a cosmic string moving at near light speed. According to the special theory of relativity, time will flow slower for the cosmic string in relation to its surroundings. In other words, you will arrive in the past after transit. If you use two cosmic strings, you can do a space def deficit jump. If you loop back to your original location, you can return to the same time you started revolving. Uh, thank you for following Galaxy Night VT. Welcome to Club Pack. Enjoy the cast of Bloodshed and Zeus. Or th the headaches I'm getting from trying to understand any of the science talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's the sciencey science that does the, the science, and it's rather sciencey. And that, roughly speaking, is time travel means of cosmic strings. <laughs> By the way, just so nobody misunderstands, Cosmic strings are not the same as super strings. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now then, you need three things in order to travel to the past cosmic strings. I think she's just flexing at this point. Oh, God. Man, the... The warp travel I made for my my other book is so much simpler than this. Yes. The hoplite drive. It shoots a wormhole. And it takes you to exactly where you want to go instantly. It's that simple. <laughs> Job done. Love it. It's it nice. still needs like you have to plan the route, so it, or not the route, but like there's all kinds of you know the calculations you expect involved, so you don't pop out inside of another ship or inside without, of a space station or yeah, something. Yeah, without precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star, bounce too close to a supernova, that'd end your trip real quick, wouldn't it? That, or you could pop out somewhere you do not intend. All that. Nowhere near your destination, because you are firing a little laser mounted to your ship that creates a wormhole, and you fly into that wormhole. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of warp travel from 40k. Hmm. Except instead of traveling through the warp for however long, you just instantly appear somewhere. First, the cosmic strings themselves. Two strings to be exact. By the way, they are hypothesized to exist only where the universe is first formed, so they might be a little hard to find. I don't think anybody knows where the fuck the, the universe formed. 
Second, you would need the energy required to make the move at near light speed. How much energy do you think you'd need to accelerate something as long as the Milky Way to near the speed of light? I'm pretty sure it's a little more than 1.21 gigawatts. What a reference. <laughs> Third, you'd need a spaceship capable of reaching these cosmic strings and returning. With the time travel alive, of course. What do you think, Hoi and San? Can you take on the challenge of cosmic string time travel? Hell yeah. When this baby hits guess. when this baby hits eighty eight miles per hour, you're gonna see some city of shit. I imagine she knows a hell of a lot about cosmic strings and probably nothing about the other ten on that list. Yeah. Like that's even possible. And why the hell is she addressing me? Can't imagine. Hmm. Looks like Hulu and San doesn't want to take the challenge. In that case, let's consider wormholes. They may be a little more realistic than cosmic strings. By the way, Hulu and San, do you know what wormholes are? That's fucked. <laughs> now you're just being patronizing. Since I've been challenged, though, I can't leave the question unanswered. It's like a shortcut through space, right? Yes, that's correct. There are two wormholes joined by a tunnel. No matter how far away the wormholes are, transit time through the tunnel is zero. But oh no, there's a problem. The wormhole tunnel suffers from supergravity and collapses as soon as it opens. It still needs something to negate the effect of gravity. So-called exotic matter. A substance with negative mass which repulses other matter. There's also the exotic matter theory. It feels like a lot of these just kind of bleed into each other. Yes. Negative mass, huh? Is it something that floats if you leave it on the ground? I suppose you would call helium exotic matter than Whitney because it floats. <laughs> hmm. It's almost like you're having to do a sort of like balloon angioplasty to a wormhole. Except you have to dump things down the worm wormhole, almost like you're trying to stop up a drain. Maybe not. Can't even begin to imagine what it would be like. Say that the wormhole tunnel is being squished by an invisible fist. In order to pass through, you need something that could oppose my fist's grasping force so I can't squish anymore. If you stabilize the tunnel with exotic matter injection, Instantaneous travel between wormholes becomes possible. To travel through time, however, it takes a little more effort. Why couldn't you be this specific for the layman's with your other explanation? Yes, and why the hell are we talking about fisting wormholes? <laughs> for example, let's say there's a wormhole entrance here in Akihabara, and the exit is in Los Angeles. We call that falling asleep on the plane. <laughs> yes. First, we send the wormhole in LA all the way to the end of the universe at near the speed of light. And once it's there, we yank it back to LA. Do we have to yank now it back to LA? I mean, I think if we would just hurl Los Angeles all the way to the end of the universe, it would not be missed. Just, just leave it there. Yeah, just leave it there. Do you know how bad the traffic is in LA? <laughs> I, I think we would be doing the world a huge favor by just hurling it to the end of the universe at near the speed of light, and then just... Job done. The government will give you a medal, because that traffic is unfixable. Yes. That's also a gigantic money pit. We need to hire one of those YouTubers that spends all of their days just fixing traffic in city skylines, but can you fix Los Angeles? Yeah. Maybe we could get Uwu's lab on that. Um, how? Well, I mean, we could just DM him. <laughs> Be like, yo, 
Uwu, can you, um, you do something about the traffic? Uh, can you build a, a wormhole projector that can hurl the entire city of Los Angeles to the end of the universe? Okay, thanks, bye. According to the special theory of relativity, time slows down for objects moving at the speed of light, meaning a hole that returned to LA would be further in the past than Yakahabara. So you're gonna make the traffic worse. Don't do that to LA. Don't do that to Akihabara! Those people have spent hours to get off that fucking highway interchange, and you're gonna send them back in time and bring them and back? Japan and right is where they just, start. <laughs> Japan just got their traffic sorted to where it's something that's reasonable and manageable now. I didn't know Japan had bad traffic. Uh, they used to. It's is awful. that why everybody walks? Um, yeah, I mean, they've, they've finally got enough transit lines and everything else, and they've also put in enough tolls and road taxes to where um, everything has sort of achieved kind of a balanced ecosystem. I mean, it, you can still get rather heavy in rush hour, but um, it's... I mean, it's not bad, really. I've been in traffic in, in Tokyo before, and it's... I mean, in comparison, I've been in worse traffic. I want to go to Tokyo one day. Oh, that's lovely. So now if Halloween San jumped into the wormhole, he'd arrive in LA several years before he left. And probably encounter his clone. And then the reality would shatter. However, this still can't be called true time travel. It only seems that way. This is called the Urashima effect. The important part is to return to Akihabara from LA through the wormhole once more. So transit time is zero. Halloween Sen will return to Akihabara several years in the past. Time travel complete. The pre prerequisites for wormhole travel are simpler than the ones for cosmic string travel. First, the wormhole itself. That may exist somewhere in the universe, but nobody's ever seen one. Second, the energy required to move a wormhole to the end of the universe and back at near light speed. Third, exotic matter, which, by the way, has not been confirmed to exist. Have you looked at helium? You put a balloon filled with helium on the ground, it floats. I think that's negative matter. Yeah, and I mean, if they're able to find dark matter, then who's to say there's not exotic, exotic matter, matter somewhere in the universe? Does dark matter exist? I... I believe it's been proven to, recently to to exist. I'm, hang on, no, let's wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's let's ask up. the Google. Has dark matter been has di dark matter been proven? Okay, Google, how close are we to fucking up reality because of time travel incidents? <laughs> I mean, who's to say that... As of two years ago, there's still no empirical evidence for the existence of dark matter. There's overwhelming indirect evidence for dark matter. Um... Yeah, trouble is, it's completely invisible. So... Yeah, hard so to... Wind. <laughs> hard to find something we can't really see. It's probably similar to ghosts. I believe in ghosts. They are not confirmed to exist. However, there's overwhelming evidence that they do. Yeah. Do you believe in ghosts, Rex? Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if they are spirits or if they're some sort of demonic force that's just roaming the earth. Um, not really sure what to make of them. I know all the ghost hunting stuff is... Uh, don't know if Flesh I really... Flesh the best. Yeah. I don't... My evidence is not from watching videos. My evidence is from reality. Yeah. The story I always think of is... I was living in a place... And I was living in the basement. And my grandmother lived upstairs. Mm-hmm. She was in the hospital. My grandfather went with her. There was not a soul upstairs because my mom was at work and my sister was downstairs with me watching TV. 
and we heard footsteps. I would go up there, and no one's out. Hmm. Something and another time, right. another place I lived in was, like, this big basement. Like, I don't like being in the dark, but it doesn't give me that much of a problem. I just kind of float out. I'm a little scared, but it's just darkness. Hmm. At this place, going downstairs, and it's nighttime, doing the laundry. Because in that place, the washing and dryer were in the basement. It always felt so oppressive and something was watching me. Interesting. Like, I'll admit it, I'm scared of the dark, but the feeling I had in that place is wholly different from just my normal fear of, like, oh, let's pitch black over there. A place you didn't want to even consider turning off a light anywhere. UCLA only... did a study on the paranormal, and if a ghost knocks on a door, it's got a fre different frequency than a human. Also, hello, action bastard. Hello, hello. Anyways, what were you going to say, Zoe? I forgot. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to think if I have any other stories. My mother thinks that my grandmother is haunting her. Before we moved out of her grandfather's apartment, which he's still alive, thankfully. Mm. There was never crows around. And then after my grandmother died, there was always one crow, always outside. No matter the time of year. And then after my grandfather's girlfriend died, from a combination with dementia and... Um... COVID. There were two crows outside. Hmm. Quoth the raven, nevermore. But yeah, I'm definitely a believer in ghosts. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm I always never... get scared every time I move because it's like, did somebody die in this place? Because someone died in this place. I don't want to be here. <laughs> Hmm. Guess you'll need to call the Ghostbusters Phoenix place. <laughs> I got lucky that my grandmother decided to haunt my mother and not me, because mm. she didn't die in the apartment, she died in the hospital, but ghosts get attached to places. Hmm. And we've had, back in my grandfather's place, it's on a slope, so... And it's sloping... You could say it would slope towards me, like, if I lean backwards like this. So, my door was on the... On the door is gonna open if it's not closed all the way type of slope. And then, across from me was the other bedroom. So, by physics, the door shouldn't open because the slope comes towards my side of the house. That door has opened multiple times. I don't live there anymore. But that door would open when it by virtue of physics should not. Kind of like the Venture Brothers. A certain character had a choice between haunting a base that constantly explodes or a 1992 Nissan Stanza. Did it choose the stanza? Implementation of either one would require a ridiculous amount of effort. Nope, he chose the base. Huh.
Shall I read a little bit more? <laughs> yes, let's keep going. So implementation of either one will require a ridiculous amount of effort. I don't mind like little breaks, just you know, talk about oh. stuff happening in our lives or whatever. Yeah, no, that's fine. Incorporating them into a time machine is even more untenable. Now do you see what I meant when I said that time travel is an absurd concept? She says as she flips her hair. Time travel theories, they're all just slow experiments. Not one of them can create a viable time machine. That's my answer. Wait till I finish my fucking book, Makase. Wait till the doctor appears. Wait till Black Hole Conspiracy gets finished, I'll slap you with my thesis. This is the limit of modern physics. I can't see how it might change in 10 years, though. There's a love of theories on that board, though probably 20 later. Mm. Besides, even if someone did overcome the logistical requirements, there may be other factors that prevent time travel from working. Like your doubt. And that's because fundamental problems concerning the principle of causality have not yet been solved. I mean, Bad Think was basically the one episode of TNG in the first season where the Enterprise traveled trillions of miles outside of their own solar system. And they're just like, we're not getting back home because all of you are not thinking good thoughts. So, Captain's orders, think good thoughts. I remember one time when I was living with my uncle, I was playing PS2 Spider-Man, started to feel lightheaded even though I was actually hydrated. Next thing I know, I see a light orb shoot towards my door and disappear. And after that, I randomly wanted to cry. Interesting. Were you possessed for your whole life, or were you possessed and then it left you and that made you want to cry? Or none of the above? We may need to call an exorcist for Jedi. I've never seen a ghost orb in reality, so... Neither have I. You mean time paradoxes and conservation of mass? Yeah, that would be an issue with time travel, wouldn't it? Time paradoxes. You, fe you see yourself, reality would probably fracture. Snake, you can't go changing the future like that! I feel like... A time paradox would just be the red alert way where Einstein went back in time. He shook Hitler's hand. Hitler disintegrated because Einstein wasn't supposed to be there. Hmm. Actually, I think Steins Gate has like the best way of how time travel functions. But I will keep the spoilers to myself. Alright then. No, I think it was just my aunt checking on me. Oh, alright then. Uh, how does a light going out of your door and you want to cry correlate into your aunt was just checking on you? <laughs> it also depends on which form of time manipulation we're talking about. Like, we're we talking travel, rewind, multiversal, timeline adjustment, etc. Oh yes, there's a whole multiverse theory of time travel. Well, you're not really traveling through a linear timeline, but rather hopping different universes. Time travel and such is actually something, a concept I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I am only one of many Zoe's. There are so many Zoe's that I call it the Zoeverse. <laughs> uh I, suppose I am Variant 1333. Variant 1333, alright then. I, I have a document that has... Um, like, 30 Zoe variants I've written on it. Oh. Tis your move, good friend. Oh, is this my line? All right. The mass of the entire universe is constant. 
I do really like that animation in the background. Yeah. Sorry, somebody came in. No worries. If a time machine traveled from the future to the past, there would suddenly be an extra mass of the time machine and its pilot in the past. I remember reading in a book, not a terribly reputable book, but still, that such a violation of mass conservation would put the universe in danger. Which is why if you touch somebody in red alert when you're time traveling, they're going to disintegrate. <laughs> Oof. I didn't say what kind of danger, though. The danger of a time travel touching and killing you. <laughs> hmm. Although, with all the supposed stories of time travelers we've had, I don't think that we're actually in danger. Yeah. I believe there's probably been people that have time travels. Way, way ahead of us. That's possible. If you think that con conservation of mass applies to macrosystems like the universe or microsystems like atoms or elementary particles, you're mistaken. What? Is that true? Yeah. Uh, she's laughing at my reaction. That little... <sighs> Mortifying. Conservation of mass only implies chemical reactions. It does not hold in modern physics at all. Zoe, to answer your question, said aunt was dead. So... You probably wanted to cry because you knew that it was your aunt. Yes. I'm not stupid enough to go looking into like abandoned places and like piss the ghosts off, but like I am curious about other people's stories and if they went investigating, etc. etc. Raiders, welcome in! Gymnator, thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream? Danny Loa, thank you so much for the follow. I believe in demons too, but I don't think they're like hellish beings that God couldn't put away or whatever. Hmm. Because I'm not religious. But I think demons do exist. They're probably like just very, very, very pissed off ghosts. Probably. Let's see. Ah, you were playing Helldivers too. How was the uh how was the fight for democracy? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing alright, Raiders, if this is your first time here. I'm Lord Rexworth, I'm an English nobleman VTuber, and uh, we're playing St uh, Steins Gate Elite here with Zoe the Demon Fox, doing some live Hello. VA work. Rex could definitely be a VA if you wanted to. <laughs> I am not a VA, I just like reading shit. Well, you do alright for yourself, Helldivers was great, wanted to jump uh, after Elden Ring. Still need to play that. Got a copy Should recently from Voshon. Uh, going to need to try that fairly soon. I have access to it through my friend's library. If it's a day that I am off, I could always do co-op with you. 
No, oh, is that a co-op mode? There's a mod that lets you have, like, it's called the Seamless Co-op Mod. Because hmm. Elden Ring does, like, what Dark Souls does. Once you kill the area boss, you can't summon your friend back in that area anymore. Oh, I see. But with the mod, you technically exist in their world. Hmm. And they did balance it. So if someone dies, you get they get a debuff when they get revived. Until you rest at another uh, bonfire. Interesting. I'm going to have to give it a try. See everyone else playing it these days. Let's see what all the fuss is about. Also, as a voice actor, you got the stuff, man. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Yes, but uh, raiders, if you need to get up and stretch, grab some hydration, grab something to eat. If you need to raid and run, totally understand. But uh, yes, feel free to kick back and relax and enjoy some Steins Gate Elite as we um, watch ourselves get served up humble pie by an elegant young genius girl scientist. And for those in Rex's chat, I've seen the anime. I know what's going to happen for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I sadly must. And Rex must. has not. No, no, I'm I'm new to this whole thing. I sadly must. Take care. All right, Jim Nator, thank you so much. Thank you again for the raid, and thanks for stopping by. Lol, just vibing here in case I need to step in and help as an extra, hence why I'm muted. Understandable, Jedi. Then, what's the problem? The time paradox of time paradoxes. In other words, the grandfather paradox. Now you hella lost me. Oh, that thing where you kill your own ancestors before you were born. Then you go in a timeline where they don't exist. Mm. Or rather, you wouldn't even exist. Or no, mm -hmm. you'd probably exist, but you'd be born from some else. As yeah. long as this paradox goes unsolved, time travel can never be realized. Never. I just solved it for you. <laughs> <laughs> you will exist. Your Are consciousness sure? will just be born by someone else. I suppose that's possible, yeah. Be sure you're prepared, because Elden Ring be challenging. Just started playing it myself, as you saw the other day. Ah, yes, that's right, that's right. Also, for the both of you, care package incoming. All right. I did hydrate. Stretching. There. Oh, I have to hydrate and stretch, too? Yes. All right. Uh, Jedi, you are making sure that you do the redeems on Zoe's channel as well, I hope. Nope. <laughs> Jedi, what's gotten into you? I thought you cared about me, Jedi. <laughs> and as far as VAs, you both are doing quite well. Thank you, Action. Thank you, thank you. What if you just don't kill them? You can't think of it like a sci-fi movie. It's not just about your family tree. There are far greater dangers than that. Like if you kill... Einstein. I don't know, I feel like if you kill certain... It would probably change a lot. But someone else would come up with the same idea. That's possible, yeah. I'm on my phone, I can't watch both at the same time. Shut up! Skill issue, bruv. Have you tried getting good? Can you access... chadgar.net on your phone? Because that play will play... If I generate the link for it, it will play both streams at the same time. That's what people do now instead of, um... I can't remember. The fucking the stream together links that people you see. I'd be interested to learn more about that. Can you can you DM that to me, Zoe? Tedgar? Yeah, I just want to check it well, out. Well, I can set up right now. All I have to do is type in the the domain, mm. and then I type in our names. Yeah.
Hold on, let me see if I can get Twitch to work on my laptop. Ah, so Spirit Jedi. More tabs. All the tabs. I used to have friends that had like 100 tabs open all the time and, and his computer ran like shit. It's like, <laughs> you know, if you close those, I think your computer ran that. It's like, I need them. I don't think you need 100 tabs. I don't think you can remember what's on the the first 50. I, I can't. I can't really say much because I've got so many tabs open. Oh, Jesus. Rex, how many tabs do you have open? Too many. I never... I lost count a long time ago. It's one of those things where there are some that I, I do genuinely refer to repeatedly, so I just leave the tabs open. There are others that I'm just like, I will get to these someday, eventually. And then there's some that it's like, I don't want to have to keep remembering to reopen them because if I close it I will forget about it. Yes, I know. I I probably need that that Kesha redeem. Close your your tabs, you fucking psychopath. Uh, I think the site's down right now. No. My wife has so many tabs open on her phone, it's no longer a number indicated, it's an infinity symbol. Yeah, I've just I've just got the, the big the the happy smiley face thing on Google Chrome. I, it gave up after about ninety-nine. Alright, so the site is down, but the link I sent you Um ignoring my name on it. The base link is up to live, and then you just type in the channel name, then another slash for every other channel name. So to set her up, it'd be live slash my name slash your name. No. Nah. All right, then. And I've been told that, like, it counts as watching all of the streams, so you still get the channel points and stuff. Nice. And the streamer gets the active views. Yeah. Really? Doesn't seem that dangerous. Any paradox, no matter how small, would cause a total collapse of causality, relativity, and every other physical law in existence. Paradoxes are nothing more than thought experiments. They cannot occur in reality, and they should not. Oh, come on, I can't all be that delicate. To be fair, this is just what people think. I think the universe is a lot tougher and more resilient than we give it credit for. Nothing that has even a 0.00001% chance of causing a paradox can happen. The universe won't allow it. Wouldn't you say this is a logical conclusion? Do you think many things are logical then, bitch? There may be loopholes, like parallel worlds with a self-consistency principle, but those seem too much of fantasy for me to accept. Oh, but the 11 theories you just outlined, those are perfectly fine. I didn't know so much about those. <laughs> Gah. I grind my teeth. Don't do that. Looks like I have no choice but to concede. Maki Sekurisu truly is a genius. But she's a logical genius. In a very but illogical world. Scientists figure out shit by being illogical. Yes. About to go down and throw my internet because it doesn't want to pop up on my laptop. Sounds like a driver problem. I end up listening to all of Kurisu's lecture at ATF. After the two time travel theories she introduced at the beginning, she explained the rest with equal eloquence. Oh god. Oh gee, this isn't my expertise. So anyway, here's 11 theories I know. The exact details for all 11. <laughs> False modesty. She seemed a little nervous at first, but that quickly changed as she spoke. By the end, it was an impressive lecture. 
So impressive, you wouldn't think it was an 18-year-old's first time. She did well to respond to my malicious questions with sarcasm. She's got guts. Wait, why am I praising her? Because you like her. I saw Makise Kurisu dead. And yet, she's alive. My memories don't mesh with reality. And not just my memories of Kurisu, but also my conversations with Mayuri. Speaking of Mayuri, I miss her. She's cute. She is. Daru, too. Everything that happens in this reality stands in stark opposition to the world I remember. Everything would be sold if I just told myself that what I saw was a dream. An illusion. It never happened. I've had vivid dreams that vivid before, so, like, I get it. And yeah, I like they a feel the real. Reality, huh? Yeah. Too many of my dreams turn out to be prophecies. I've definitely had prophetic dreams before. Mm. Like, but nothing I'm... major. Like, oh god, the world's going to end. Just, like, minor things, and then they come to pass. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> then you get a cool. feeling of deja vu. Yeah. Like, I've dreamed about areas I've been in. Mm-hmm. And then I actually end up seeing those areas like, oh, never been here before, but I dreamed about it, and we happen to be driving past it. Hmm. Just minor, non-life-altering shit like that. Like, I dream about locations that I'll inevitably drive by in years past, or food I'm going to eat, people I'm going to talk to. Nothing, like, the world's gonna end. <laughs> yeah, never anything like that for me. By the time I had snapped out of my internal monologue, Dadu had wandered off. So be it. I would, too. Yeah, so would I. I could probably wander off and then come back. And he'd, and he'd still, still be in that same he'd still be there. I need to focus on finding a way to discover the true cause of my contradicting memories anyway. Dude, Akabe, you've been standing here for three days. Are you okay? <laughs> it's like, eat something, man. Go to the bathroom. You haven't ate. You haven't pissed. <laughs> you haven't moved. You haven't taken a shit in three days, man. That's bad for your bowels and your kidneys. Have you done any of your pants either? Like, dude, you're... <laughs> you need to do something about this. Oh, your leg's not gone numb. I did not fall over. <laughs> as someone that has stood on a single tile for hours as punishment, yeah, you're always going to get tired. You're going to take one step, and then your fucking calf is going to lock up on you. It's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. This leaves me with no choice. I'm going to have to buy a body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> this game is currently taking place in 2010, July 28th. I arrive at Yanabayashi's shrine. I need to get exercised. Oh, I like this character he's about to meet. I know this character. I seriously doubt that Makuse Kurisu at ATF was a ghost. No, you touched her cheek, and some other places. She's a ghost now. She goes to you. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, it's natural to seek an exorcism after such an experience. 
I'm Japanese. It's in our blood. You ever just stand up and your leg just cramps up randomly? No. No. I'm a streamer. My legs are immune to that. <laughs> Yanabayashi Shrine is located on the other side of the Kanda River. To find it, enter the first side road after crossing the Mansebashi Bridge. It's a very small shrine that doesn't fit with the surrounding multi-tenant buildings. I suppose since you've been to Tokyo, you're able to pronounce these Japanese, Japanese names flawlessly. Uh, um, well enough. I need Romaji to pronounce it properly, but... Yeah, I've had a bit of practice. Kanda Myojin is the more famous shrine in Akiba, but I deliberately chose this one. Cassie, I will hurt you. There she is. It's Okren! Tattoo! There are two cute girls standing in front of the main building. <laughs> One is Mayuri, and the other is the docile-looking beauty wearing traditional Miko attire. It is Shibata Luka. Uh, I must resist. The chief priest's son. Oh, well, there it is. I don't need to resist it anymore. <laughs> Lovely in every way. But he's a guy. Well, that's a dude. All right, what voice do I give the quiet guy? <clears throat> Good afternoon, Okabe san. That's a chap. Yes. They look so effeminate. I never noticed by looking at them from a distance. <laughs> In the anime, Okabe fucking is stuck on that for like five minutes. He keeps saying something about Luca, and he's like, but he's a guy. And he says something else about Luca, but it's a guy. <laughs> ah. Welcome to anime, lol. Hmm. I mean, I still see this as, like, one of the more realistic animes, because, like, Okabe is even, like, in disbelief. <laughs> I suppose so. We met when I rescued him from aggressive photographers in Akiba's pedestrian heaven. Any research and I just Cassie. I cracked my fingers on my back. Ow. Ouch. It also so happens that Lukaku and Mayuri are classmates. I learned that fact after I'd gotten to know him. Are you practicing with Samidari like I told you? Luca is a major character. Yes. He's so fucking cute. Good girl. I mean, good boy. I mean, good fin boy. I mean, good. Butch. <laughs> good person. Boy. Good person. I'm not going to call them a thing, Jedi. That's dehumanizing. As long as you master the Seishin Zanma school of swordsmanship, you can prevent the dark flame inside you from consuming your soul. Demon sword Semidare may be an imitation sword, but that is the only form it takes to hide from the world. Fuck you, Cassie. When one worthy to wield it appears, it unleashes its true power. Luca plays along with Okabe's delusions. I don't know if she believes in him. He fuck. God damn it! This is gonna be an issue with me for the entire stream. <laughs> I don't know if he believes in it or if he's just doing it because he thinks it's fun. Hmm. Probably the latter. I really appreciate this Okabe-san. 
My name is an Okabe. It's Okerheen! I'm sorry, Kyoma-san. As long as you understand. Now, speak the words. Ah, uh, um... El Sai Kangalu? No, not Kongalu, Kongalu. Yes. El Sai Kongalu. Did I get it right? Lukaku smiles happily as I nod. He's too fucking cute on my diet. Thank you. Such a beautiful master to say about relationship. Wait, she's not a Fu Joji, but she's getting a little excited. But Mary Chan, please don't imagine such things. Jeez. Though we do have a master disciple relationship. What are you doing here, Mayuri? I came to see Lucas Goon. I'm in my ass coming up next month, and I want to see I want him to cosplay as Kirari Chan for Rhyna, but he won't say yes. But cosplaying is just too embarrassing for me. But I'm sure you look great in it. The <laughs> phrase from this Q can't be a girl is really popular, you know? Come on. I'll make your cosplay debut. Mayori's hobby is making costumes. She's made at least 30 so far, but it's rare for her to wear one herself. She's cosplay mom! Instead, she seems to get her kicks from seeing other people wear them. See? Cosplay mom! I want to wear cosplay one day. You will. And it looks like she's chosen Lukaku as her next target. I only cosplay as N16 from Gross Frontline for my first cosplay. <laughs> that would be cool. Anyway, Lukaku, there's a good reason for my being here today. I need you to perform an exorcism. An exorcism? Then I'll get my dad. Please wait. No. It's something that serious. I just need some peace of mind. Uh, Jedi likes Luca, doesn't he? Isn't he so adorable, Jedi? That's why I came here instead of Kanda Shrine. So, with that said, bring out the usual. Um, the usual? Isn't that Mayori's line? No, she didn't talk, she just looked up. Oh. The usual for an exorcism should be obvious. Uh, um... I don't know what it's called, but it's that stick with the ziggy zaggy paper thingies that the priest does the shaky thingy with. Very detailed description, sir. Thank you for that. Give me one second. Sure. The usual. So, a donut from Krispy Kreme. Yes. 
and and a nice coffee. Or am I thinking of something that's to pay for the exorcism? You know what? Let's throw in the donut and the iced coffee as as a, as a little freebie. You know, just for just for coming out. That was the coffee I actually got on my way home, was a Dunkin' Donuts mocha iced coffee. Which was quite good. It gave me just the right amount of caffeine pick-me-up that I needed. Normally I'm a tea drinker. Or a gamer juice drinker. Don't really go in for Red Bulls or Bangs or um, any of the canned energy drinks. It's more caffeinated teas and gamer juice or nothing at all. And the acid in coffee gives me indigestion after a while and also drink enough of the stuff and it actually starts to... It honestly starts to hurt some of my joints, so it kind of inflames my my joints just a little bit, makes them hurt, you know, especially around my knees. Um, well, you know, that wasn't bad. Mocha iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, that uh, was actually quite good. Now, to show you the power of old advertisements, I um, <laughs> I recently discovered um, someone posted the an entire collection of the old Nescafe Gold Blend commercials on YouTube. So I was watching those. Because they don't have Gold Blend here in the US. They've got uh, the equivalent is called Taster's Choice. I've um that's got me thinking maybe I should get some get some tasters choice. Which is really not bad coffee. Not bad for instant. Regular Nescafe, not so much, but um Tasters Choice is not bad. Especially the lighter roast, you know, sort of the house blend. Not very fond of the um of like the, the dark French roast or anything like that. I haven't had Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' in ages. Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Really good. Some of the best, I think. And of course, donuts are just second to none. Frozen chocolate is the best thing at Dunkin' Donuts, though. Though I don't think it's sold anymore. It could be right. Also, welcome in, Voidling. Good to see you. Frozen chocolate, that, that sounds really good. Especially on a hot day. You know, something like a, a frozen or a soft serve chocolate ice cream. Or maybe it's even like a, a chocolate milkshake. It's basically hot chocolate powder, milk, chocolate setup, all in blended ice. With more chocolate setup on top. Oh, that does sound good. Now that does sound perfect for a, a hot day. Hmm. 
just all that blended ice that ice cold chocolate mm. Yes. Pull the trash down and back. Oh, no worries. <laughs> That's something really dumb, okay. Quite a shock to hear that from my Yuri. I worked at one. I made the best frozen chocolates, in my opinion, but too lazy to get everything together for it. Gah! It's the evil spirit in my arm! Be still, foul spirit! Get out of my mind, liquid! <laughs> Gah! Hurry, Lukaku, it's trying to... It's trying to take over! Liquid snake, no! It's been a while, brother! No way. Please hang in there, could be san I'm not Okabe-san. I am Liquid Snake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kiyoma-san, uh, but what should I... The exorcism, early. Just do it like I... Like I taught you. If you don't hurry, you're gonna trigger a fight scene where we inject each other with the nanites that keeps us alive. <laughs> Quick, Snake! Plug the controller into the second port! <laughs> Psycho Mantis can't read your memory card if it's plugged into a different slot. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, uh, I have an add-on, so shall we conversate for a minute and a half? Uh, yeah, sure. The Crusader has arrived. Oh, yay! I had something to say earlier, and I was gonna wait, but then I forgot. Fuck. Oh? Uh, do you play any gotchas, Rex? I recently got into Wuthering Waves. I do still have save files for uh, Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. You might like Grey Raven. It is by the same developers of Wuthering Waves. Oh. Oh, that's right. I I think I remember somebody mentioning that. I don't know Probably if it was me, because I told you I was doing a boss battle and it was waiting for you to get on tonight. Yes, okay, yes, that's right. I think it's pretty fun. The gotchas give you characters pretty... And Rosso, apparently. yes, Rosso, you mentioned that a few times uh, as well, yes. Pigeon oh, Rosso, was... Mr. Raven? Yeah, Rosso's the one who, t who turned me on to, uh, to Wuthering Waves, him and Asuna. I wish Wuthering Waves would run for me. No, it doesn't. I can play it, but it's like... It stutters a lot, and when it's not stuttering, the, the audio just isn't... synced. Hmm. That's strange. I wonder if you may need to just crank the settings down to lowest possible. It's not any more graphical than any in Genshin, though. Genshin works perfectly fine. Hmm. And I have ran games of higher intensity than Loving Waves. Do you... Now, is this trying to stream Wuthering Waves? Nope. Just me playing by myself. Huh. That is odd. Well, on a good note, both games, PGR and Woo, are getting more people to work on them. Oh, that's good. PGR deserves the hype. I saw a meme 
where someone was like, the best marketing strategy for BGR was making Wuthering Waves. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, Lamau. I wanted to like Weathering Waves, but like, I just doesn't the frame rate and the, the sound issue. Mm -hmm. But I am a massive fan of Grey Raven. It's the only gotcha I've ever spent money on. Wow. Must really be something then. I used to always brag, like, I play all these gotchas, I never spend money on them. And then PGR came along and broke that trend. I mean, I played it before, like, years ago, but I... Mm -hmm. I got halfway through the game, because I still remember the chapter, I lost my account on, just out of, like, I didn't use it and I couldn't remember the login, whatever. Hmm. I got to that point, and then I saw a character I wanted. Cassie, I don't care if it's Flying Crusader or the Grand Crusader. I just want the Crusader. I got to that point in the game. As like... From the time I stopped playing... About five characters came out. Hmm. Two of my favorite characters are called 21 and Alpha. Because for lore reasons, there's like about 10 characters, but they get new frames because they're robots with a uh, human mind impl implanted and they like upgrade their body canonically as the story goes hmm. so alpha's original frame was called crimson abyss she was like a very early one then when i came back to the game alpha got a new frame Crimson Weave, and 21 got a new frame called Feral. What a name. I rolled Feral instantly on my first 10 pull. <laughs> and I got Crimson Weave on my third 10 pull. Not bad. And then another character called Noctis came out recently. Like, I know the order that they're gonna come- characters come out in, because I- the- in typical gacha fashion, the Asian version is way ahead of the global, but- Of course. Noctis comes out. I roll him in my first temple. Amazing. And canonically, Noctis- 21 and another character called Vera are all together in a squad called Cerberus. So I just wanna... All I wanna do now is roll Vera's other frame called Vera Garnet. And then I'll have the whole team together. That sounds like the odds are in your favor. Should have it soon enough. Eh, the odds have been against me. Apparently, new stuff I'm more likely to roll than old stuff. Mm. Garnet is a pretty old frame with release standards. Oh yeah, Garnet Veta is awesome. Hmm. She is. I like her. I mean, it sounds like you've got good odds with uh, with PGR. Uh, it sounds like it's similar to what you would find in Wuthering Waves. I rolled 21 her base frame faster than I rolled it when she first released. Hmm. In 
interesting. Yeah, I know with Wuthering Waves, story-wise, it's... I have no idea what's even going on. I wrote a lot of good characters in Wuthering Waves. Mm. I just wish I could use them because the fucking centering. There has to be a way to get that fixed. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Crow is just more focused on PGR and they really did make <laughs> Wuthering Waves to market PGR. Possible. Hopefully one day. Hmm. Because there's a rival to Payday called Crime Boss Rocket City. And that shit, I can run it above Neon and that shit stutters constantly. Hmm. Crime Boss. Crime Boss Rocket City. R-O-C-K-A-Y. Runs great in the mission. The menus and the dialogue, though, are fucked. Hmm. I don't think I've ever played Crime Boss before. It's been an epic for the longest time. It's an epic exclusive. Hmm. Came to Steam and they made it 20 bucks and you get all the DLC. Damn. All the current DLC. Well, June 18th, something came out on Steam. Hmm. It's a roguelite. Like, it plays like Payday. The whole concept is you play as a man named Travis Baker, and you are in Rock Cave City. There was a man named The King who ruled the criminal underworld. He died. Travis comes along. And he wants to be the new king of Rocket City. But you have to take over. You have to fight three other gangs. And some lady who's trying to advance the police force. And you're fighting Sheriff Norris. And if you think that's a funny name, it's Chuck Norris. You actually have to fight Chuck Norris. Yes. May as well give up now. Exactly. Three rival gangs, the police force, and Chuck Norris. No pressure, right? I mean, Chuck Norris is like the, the sheriff. Of course he is. He's Walker, Texas Ranger. He's not even from Rock A City, canonically. No, he just... But he comes in because to deal with all the gang infighting because the king's dead. Mm-hmm. And, like, the whole roguelite mode is you need to take control of Rocky City before he finishes his investigation. Why am I getting an image of the king is really just an imitation of the Kingpin from from Marvel. I mean, the the King was like the one that ran everything. He had no rivals. When he died, was he also one fat of the, and bold? the three king, one of the three kings you fight is his right hand man because he wants to bring things back to when the King is still alive. Hmm. One of them is a rapper. And I'm surprised he has a, a game to run. And the other one, I can't remember. And then... Cognali is like this... I think she counts as a game until you play the DLC that focuses on her. Interesting. But she was like a farm girl and she like made a whole fucking sci-fi conglomerate so her troops look like SWAT but are not SWAT but and then there's a whole DLC where she introduces robots to the police is like 
These are going to help a lot more than cops. And the robots look like Ed 209. And then Baker... I haven't played that DLC yet, but as far as I'm aware, Baker's like, oh, this isn't going to fly in my city. <laughs> I'm sure about that. Yes, because but, uh, as we've seen, the Ed 209s are prone to malfunction. Like, the whole campaign is played in roguelite mode. Like, you play as Travis Baker, but you select, you hire people, and you select them to go on to missions. Hmm. And they have to rest after a mission. Baker can go on two missions, but if Baker dies on a mission, the entire run is over. So, basically, don't take Baker on a mission. But that's the thing, because if you take Baker, he gives you 50% more cash for the mission. Hmm, it's a gamble. And also, every baker could go on a mission twice in a day. Because the game uses a date system, like Payday does. But you decide when the day ends. Hmm. So, for example, let's say Heist one, You could send... Generic asshole number one and generic asshole number two. There are four slots. You could send all four assholes. But you can only send an asshole once for that day and then the next mission let's say you send all four assholes on that one there's only let's so much assholery have, they can dish out in one day let's say you have like eight in your your uh your pool of people hmm. so you sent those four you got four more mm-hmm you send them, but there's eight total. One of them is Travis. Travis is always selectable. So, technically you get seven, and then you get Travis. And most annoyingly, low-tier people you hire mm -hmm. don't have a first socket weapon. They have secondaries only. Travis, a gold character, only has a revolver. It's a one-shot revolver, but it's a revolver and it's a pain in the ass to reload. And I'm... the game's difficulty is like you take damage a hell of a faster than doing payday. <laughs> Yeah, I am starting to not like the sound of all this. This sounds like pain. Agony. That's 80 gigs for all that shit. And those Sam, the stuttering. Hmm. I think I'd rather just stick with Payday. Yeah, I wish Payday 3 were good. So Baker is an albatross handicap. Sounds that way. Hmm. Well, we are at, I believe, the two-hour mark for stream. Uh, do we want to just call it here and pick up um, next week? Up to you. I think I should probably try and get to bed at a decent hour, so... No worries. Yeah. Let's go ahead and call it here. I <laughs> It was her teams. Chew on that, Jedi. Lol. Oh, I can make so much rest of Jedi. Because <laughs> I'm not going to stream yet, so. Oh, you're going to keep going? Yeah. Alright then. I will just raid everybody into you then. 
And I'm as just well. The torture begins. Oh, Jedi. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That just sound like <laughs> How did I save last time? I don't know. Quick save, F8. I'm gonna do F8 and F6. There we go. Quick save. I did both. Number Just four. Sure. Yeah, I played it three years ago. Oh my. Didn't even notice the dates on those save files, goodness. But yes, most certainly we have gotten a lot farther. Indeed. We'll pick this up next week, everybody. But for now, I'm going to leave you in the safe and capable hands of Zoe. And um, she'll figure out something else to have some fun with. Um, but I'm off to bed for tonight. Uh, thank you all for joining me. I'm Lord Rexworth. Wish you all the best and God bless.